to the latest supersonic fighters. But this company has also received a contract from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration to develop and build the Lunar Excursion Module, or LEM. This is the spacecraft which will carry two astronauts from a lunar orbit to the surface of the moon and back up again. In a moment, we'll have a chance to climb aboard the LEM and actually make a simulated landing. But first, let's see how this spacecraft fits into the overall Project Apollo mission to place man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. The Apollo spacecraft will lift off from pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. After the first and second stages have separated, the spacecraft will be placed in an Earth orbit. Here it will be checked out by the astronauts and through telemetry by the ground mission control center. At a precise point in the orbit, the third stage rocket engine will reignite and thrust the vehicle out along a path that will carry it toward the moon. During the coast period, the command and service modules will separate from the booster and using reaction control jets to maneuver in space will turn around and dock with the LEM nose to nose. The two will then pull away from the Saturn rocket. The trajectory will be checked and mid-course corrections made. Nearing the moon, the service module engine will reduce flight speed so that the spacecraft will fly in an orbit around the moon about 80 miles above its surface. Two of the crew members will transfer to the LEM, leaving their companion and the command module in lunar orbit. By firing its own rocket descent engine, the LEM will be maneuvered to a touchdown on the surface of the moon, carrying the two men and their scientific and documentation equipment. While one astronaut explores the area around the LEM, the second remains inside to maintain communications. When it is time to return, Liftoff from the moon will be accomplished by an ascent engine, leaving the descent stage on the moon. The LEM will be thrust back into lunar orbit to rendezvous and dock with the Apollo spacecraft. The two lunar explorers will then transfer back to the command module, rejoining their comrade who remained on board the orbiting spacecraft. The LEM will be separated and left behind in lunar orbit as the other two modules carrying the crew and supplies return to Earth using the engine of the service module. Shortly before re-entry, the service module will be jettisoned, leaving the command module free to reorient for the trip through the atmosphere. Three parachutes will lower the Apollo spacecraft to the Earth at 15 miles per hour. You see uh, the motion of the vehicle, I'll tell you how it works. We, the pilot stands in the flight station, mm -hmm. and he moves the controls, and works through a computer, which is an analog computer in another room, which in turn flies a television camera over a, a lunar map, which is in another room. Oh, and then you see the output of that camera here. Yes. So that as you move it, you, it looks like you're lighting a camera. It. Is it very realistic? It's realistic, yes. It's, it's, it's a six degree of freedom simulation. Now, we accurately represent How soon will the astronauts be able to actually fly these uh, limbs? Well, they'll never be able to fly an actual limb on Earth due to the difference in the strength of the gravitational field on Earth as compared to the moon. Mm -hmm. The limb doesn't have enough thrust to actually fly on Earth, even though it can fly very well on the moon. So much of our flying and practice landing will have to be done in simulated flight conditions and in carefully controlled simulations. 
Claim it, Doc. I'm your witness. Claim it officially. By the grace of God, and in the name of the United States of America, I take possession of this planet on behalf of and for the benefit of all mankind. Dr. Cargraves, Mr. Barnes. Yes? I'm in contact with Washington. There's terrific excitement on Oyth. We're hooked up to all the networks. They just interviewed the general. They want to interview you and Mr. Barnes, Doc. I've passed your walkie-talkie in on a transmitter. I've hooked up our receiver, too. You can have a two-way conversation with them. Okay. Go ahead, Oyth. Hello. Hello on the moon. This is Clarence Erskine greeting you from the Earth. The people of the world congratulate you for your epoch-making achievements. Thank you. Thank you. I must explain to the listeners that the lag between my voice and those from the moon is due to the vastness of space. It takes three seconds, even at the speed of light, for radio waves to travel between the Earth and moon. Mr. Barnes, can you tell us where you landed? The astronomers at Palomar say they could see you if they knew where to point the big eye. We landed in the crater Harpalus, which is in the upper left-hand quadrant of the moon, as seen from the... <laughs> 